this song, God So Loved. It's come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Can I get an amen? Okay. our summer song and we finally get to sing that outside in the true summer. What yeah. a great day of worshiping together today. The song says, what are you doing for the king? Have you given him everything? Because he gave his all for you.
morning and praise the Lord. Yeah. Good morning, Waterloo Church family. I'm Pastor Brian. Glad you joined us. Backyard worship today. And those live on Facebook, YouTube later on this week. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, we will be outside next week as long as it doesn't rain. If it looks like rain, we'll probably be inside. We'll play that, keep you posted on what's going on next week, spending on what God does with the weather. Uh, offering the mailbox on the wall, on the, on the wall, on the tree, uh, the green mailbox, uh, you can put your offering in there, or you can do online uh, through your banking system, or uh, send a check or whatever, uh, or donate to the church webpage, wfmchurch.org, on the donate tab is available. Sunday school classes on Sunday morning, 9.30. Uh, for all different ages, so if you have kids, you're welcome to bring them and be a part of that. I encourage you to do that. No Wednesday night activities. The ladies just finished their Bible study. They'll probably start again in the summer, along with another one for the guys and uh, the youth and the teens are doing stuff in July and August as well. So we'll keep you posted as that. Pick a ball on Thursday night. You want to come and play, learn how to play. Uh, you're welcome to come six o'clock uh, in the new facility. Uh, to do that next Sunday morning after morning worship, we're having a society meeting, election of officers. Uh, we would love for you to take part in that and uh, be involved in the church and serving the church and uh, looking for opportunities to serve. See me or somebody on the nominating committee, and we'll get you connected with that as well. Uh, I think that's all the announcements I had. Uh, I wasn't going to do this, but I, I was concerned I would get pushback. For Mother's Day, I handed out flowers, gifts for the moms. We had a little quiz, and uh, we handed out flowers and things like these. These are flowers from a memorial service yesterday. Uh, Phyllis Palmer passed away last January, and the family had a memorial service here. Uh, so dads, I know that you would want these gifts, so let's just see if we can get a winner or not. Who's the oldest dad here today? Jim, how old are you? 82. Anybody beat 82? 82. George, how old? 91. 91. No, there's two pieces. He can share. It's all right. It's all right. Isn't it break? I got you. I got you covered. Who, which dad drove the oldest car today? 51. Perry, what's yours? 66, 58, 58, 51 going once, 55, I'm sorry, had to fudge, don't be fudging on me, don't be fudging on me, oh my goodness, uh, the dad with the most kids in church today, Brandon, how many you got, got four, anybody beat four? Anybody else have four? Where's he? Hey, Matt, come here, please. I have one more. Last question. Dads? Last time you prayed with your family. Last time. Two hours ago? Six hours ago? Eight hours ago last night? Devotions this morning? Do I hear a number? Two and a half. 24. Last week or last night? Okay. Anybody else? Come get it, Matt. Come get it, Matt. I'll give it to you. Perfect. Thank you, Matt. I, in your bulletin is the memory verse. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour, I need you. I want 
sin runs deep, your grace is more, where grace is found.
stand together for prayer. Father, it's amazing when we figure out that you know who we are and we get to give ourselves to you. I thank you for the fathers that brought their children to church today. I thank you for the fathers that pray with their families. I thank you, Father, for those uh, dads that love their kids and tuck them in in bed at night and say prayers with them. Thank you, Father, for those men, those dads that uh, live godly lives in their home, in their community. We thank you, Father, for each of them. Father, I pray for those dads that are either uh, out of state, out of town, away, or even those dads that have passed on. And there's men and uh, families missing their dads, whether they're in the military or serving around the world. Father, I pray that today would be a special day. I pray, Father, that your sweet Holy Spirit would wash over us and speak to our hearts and our lives. That us dads would be different today tomorrow and the next day. Thank you, Father, for what you're going to do. Be with those that are sick, and whether it's a broken leg like Joanne uh, Gillum or uh, recovering from surgery. I thank you that Jerry's doing so well from her surgery. And Father, we just pray that you continue to be with each situation, that your hand would be upon them. Thank you, Father. Speak to our hearts today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. The kids can be dismissed. I believe they're going in the basement with Miss Cindy. It's the first week being outside. It's like we got to relearn everything. <laughs> If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew, I mean Mark. Mark, it's in the bulletin also, Mark chapter 8. You can turn with me, Mark chapter 8. We did print the scripture in the bulletin, knowing that it would be outside, we wouldn't have pews for everybody. Uh, but we're going to be there in just a moment. We are in the middle of talking about a disciple. What is a disciple? What does a disciple look like? Well, we know a disciple is someone who prays and someone who loves, loves the Lord your God with all your heart and loves your neighbor as yourself. A disciple is one who's been forgiven, right, and knows how to forgive others. A disciple is one who builds into other people's lives. A disciple is one um, who spends time with Jesus. Uh, Mother's Day, we talked about the very thing, listening and spending time with Jesus. A disciple is one who lives a holy life. Last week we talked about that passage out of Ephesians. A disciple is one who doesn't get drunk with wine, but is filled with the Holy Spirit. A disciple is one who makes music in their heart and has a music, a song on their lips. And a disciple is someone who gives thanks to God. Dads? Sermons for dads, but everybody listen in, because it applies to you too. So I'm going to call out dads, but it applies to everybody. Uh, dads, uh, everyone, your kids, your family needs you to be a disciple, a disciple of Jesus. Uh, they know when you're faking it. They know when you're doing it. They know. Dads, it is vital for your kids, your family, for you to follow Jesus, to be a disciple, to learn what it is to be a disciple and follow him. Because your family or your kids are following you. You don't have kids yet. They will. They'll follow you. So dads, we, we talked about, we encourage you to drive something to church, old car, old truck, and we appreciate you guys that did that, uh, something like that. Uh, maybe you drove your old jalopy today. Maybe. Maybe you even parked between the lines, Kathy. Guy had to get in the truck and move it so it wasn't too close to the old truck, but between the lines, so he parks right Guys, how many have a, a name for your tr or your vehicle? Anybody got a name for their vehicle? Jim, what do you call your truck? Oh, not, not this one. Anybody have a name for their truck? Sally. Sally. The old Mustang Sally. Yeah. Anybody else have a name? What? True love. 
True love slash Kathy, right? Is that how that reads on the back of it? Some friends of mine named my truck the Mule. The Mule, so when I got a new truck, I had to call it the Mule 2. My grandfather used to have a name for his car, and it was called Betsy. And he talked to Betsy just like it was real. Come on, Betsy, start. Come on, Betsy, slow down. Come on, Betsy, let's go out in the driveway. It's time for a bath. He talked to it like it was a dog or a cat, but that was his baby, Betsy, Betsy. But today's really not what you drove to church, but about what drives you. What really drives you? What is the thing that drives you, that just gets you going, so to speak? Causes your heart rate to jump up, uh, puts a little smile, a little snicker, snicker on your side of your face, you know, that, that little bit of excitement. Mark's back there grinning ear to ear. It's when he slams past the brine and pickleball and says, there you go. Uh, yeah, it, it's that. What is that thing that just drives you? I want to talk about a couple things today over the years that have driven me. And one was sports. Sports drove me. Man, oh man, back in high school and college sports was it. I practiced. I even lifted weights. I worked out. I ate healthy. Uh, it was a drive to play and to compete. I wanted to do that. It affected every area of my life. I gave up time with my girlfriend to work out. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about any of you guys. Uh, to get better and faster and stronger. To learn the game better. When everyone else was sleeping in, I got up early. Man, it was time to go. That's what drives you today. Another thing, there was a time in my life that money and success drove me. It was the driving factor. I, I worked late at night. I got into the office early. I built re relationships with corporate GM guys, guys like uh, Jerry and Tony and Ed. They were great guys. I loved spending time with them. Matter of fact, I enjoyed the GM uh, contracts that I had that I worked doing office furniture for. Uh, I even joined the GM Golf League so I could learn more executives and get to know more guys and, and work in more areas. I took him to lunch and we did trips to Grand Rapids to Steelcase when we lived in Flint. Matter of fact, at one time we flew to Atlanta to look at carpet was our excuse, but really we just wanted to play golf at Callaway. So we went to Callaway and played golf and, and we did make a factory tour and looked at carpet. We did that as well. Money, success was the driving thing behind me at the time. Dad's what drives you. Maybe you can relate to this. At one time, and it's still current today, some, what? Love drove me. It was a beautiful young lady. We reconnected, we knew each other in high school a little bit, went off to college different ways. We reconnected in the neighborhood. She was living at my cousin's house. And uh, we, next thing you know, we're talking. And next thing you know, I take her on this beautiful date to the 4th of July to watch fireworks with my cousin. The three of us are sitting in my Dodge Dart Bicentennial 1976. There's only 500 of them made, red, white, and blue, beautiful car, leather seats. And it's me driving and Cindy and my cousin Cheryl uh, sitting in the front two bucket seats. And one of them drops a sparkler on my leather seats. It was love that drove me to so doing something stupid. I was in love. And before long, we were getting married. Love drove me to buy, you know, I bought her a car before we even married. She had to get to work somehow. I couldn't make her walk, right? Bought her a beautiful Nova. Oh my goodness, was it a beautiful car. $500 with a logging chain in the back trunk to hold the back end down because it would flat out squeal the tires. I loved her so much we bought a house and furniture to fill the house. Man, as we were getting married, we bought this house and, and she lived in the house before we got married. I still living at mom and dad's house. And I bought all the furniture to fill the whole living room. It was amazing. There was a sofa and a love seat and a rocking chair, two end tables with beautiful lamps that went on them, a coffee table. It was amazing what you could buy for $500. 
love drove him. Love drove us to have children. And there was a time in my life, my children drove me. Drove me crazy at times. I, I, you, you know that already. Uh, there's a time that uh, our kids drive us and we want them to succeed and we want them to have the best schools and the best sports and the best life. And we ran our kids to practice and to school events and friend's house, even if it was 50 miles away from Lansing back to Flint. We connected them with good friends. We wanted good friends around them and good activities. And there was a Christian singing group that we got them involved with in youth group and summer camps and mission trips. Our kids drive us at times. Dad's what drives you. And if we're not careful, my grandkids might try to drive me or my job and ministry might try to drive me. But I want to talk about what drives us today. And the answer is Jesus. Jesus should be the very thing that drives us. Jesus should be that very thing. Those other things, they have to take a back seat to Jesus. They have to step aside. They're still important. Don't get me wrong. They're still important and they're still part of my life and things like that. But they have to have the rightful place. Jesus has to be what drives you. You see, Jesus forgave me of my sins, set me free driving me to be thankful. Jesus forgave me of all the opportunities I missed and all the times I wasted in, in life. And Jesus is what has to drive me. Jesus is what it is. You have to understand, Jesus loved us so much that he sent his son and he came and died. Jesus laid down his life for us. See, at one time, Jesus drove me to quit my job selling office furniture and all that other stuff to follow him driving me to step out on faith not knowing where i was going but god had a plan jesus took us to lansing and then down here to water Bleak, and he just drove me more and more to trust and obey him to follow him believing that god had a plan and a purpose for my life jesus is what drove me jesus drove me to get out of bed this morning get ready for the day put a song in my heart you know what song stuck in my head my redeemer lives my redeemer lives. he rescued my soul he set me free i don't even know the rest of the song my redeemer lives uh, does god just put a song in your heart a phrase jesus drove me to get here early today prepare to pray for you guys that are, might show up jesus drove me to call you to follow him that's what it's all about jesus drove me to be a disciple, a follower of him, and invite you as well to be a follower of Jesus. Jesus drove me to be a better man, better husband, a better person than I was before. I didn't do anything really that bad. I didn't murder too many people, right? Uh, but just being good is not good enough. You have to have Jesus in your heart. Just being a good person or a good husband is not good enough. You gotta be driven by Jesus. Dad, what drives you? What is it? Sometimes fear drives us. Fear is, drives us to do certain things. Sometimes it's center stage and glamor and the lights and I gotta be up front type thing drives us. Sometimes it's our pride and our selfishness that drives us. There's so many things the world throws at us. Pressures to keep up with the neighbors, the Joneses, the coworkers and stuff. What drives you? Turn with me to Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. It's on the front of your bulletin. Let me just set the stage for you. Jesus just got done feeding 4,000. It's another account. There's another time he feeds 5,000. It's Mark chapter 8. He feeds uh, 4,000. The Pharisees are demanding him to do some miraculous miracles uh, to just prove who he was. Uh, Jesus later on in the chapter heals a blind guy. Peter uh, declares that Jesus is the Messiah. He comes out and finally says, Jesus, you are the Messiah. And Jesus starts to talk about his death, where he's going. He's going to the cross. And Peter pulls him aside and says, uh-uh, that ain't going to happen. We ain't going to let that happen. Uh, and Jesus says, he rebukes him. Matter of fact, Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. Because 
Peter had it all messed up. He had it all messed up at this point. Mark chapter 8, verse 33. You are seeing things merely with your human point of view, not from God's point of view. Verse 34. Then he called the crowd. So he's having this conversation with Jesus, and you're just seeing it your way. You, you're not seeing the whole picture. Let's pull a crowd in. Let's have a conversation. And he called the crowd together along with him and with his disciples. Said, Whoever wants to be my disciples must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. That's what you got to do. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. Whatever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. Verse 36. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my word in this adulterous, sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with all the angels. Let's look at verse 36 just for a second. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world, have everything? What benefit, what profit, depending on the translation, for someone to gain the whole world, to get everything, to forfeit everything, destroy yourself, end up with in hell, what good is that if I had everything? If I didn't change what drove me, that's where I'd be at. If I would have continued to follow sports or money or some of that other stuff, it would have destroyed me. It would have destroyed my life, would have destroyed my marriage. It would have destroyed us. Anytime we let anything else other than Jesus guide our lives, we will be in trouble. We'll make a mess of it. Just look around. It's all around us. Yes, dads, we're to love our kids. Yes, dads, we're to love our wives. Yes, dad, but we are to love Jesus more, greater than that. Verse 34, he says, Whoever wants to be my disciples must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. The word disciple, as we know, is a learner or a pupil, someone who is intensely engaged, totally committed to stay close to that person that they're following. Totally committed, dedicated to the teacher, Jesus. Dads, are you learning? Are you growing? Are you following Jesus? Dads, are you totally committed to staying close to him, to following Jesus? Is Jesus what really drives you, dads? If it's not, we'll be in trouble. You know the first thing you have to do to start your car? A guy told me, told me this story, true story. He got in his car, turned his key, and it didn't even click. So he changed the battery, got back in his car, turned the key, and it didn't even click. He thought it must be a solenoid. He put a new solenoid in it, got in the car, turned the key, nothing. Nothing. And then he realized the car wasn't in park. I'm glad he didn't replace the engine. Dads, today, I want you to put your life in park just for a second and restart. Dads, today, I want you to start over with Jesus. The first thing we have to do is say yes to Jesus. Is slowing our lives down enough to say yes to Jesus and invite him into our hearts and into our lives living in that daily relationship with him, developing an intimate love relationship with Jesus. How do you do that? Verse 35, it's right here. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and the gospel will save it. To lose our life is to let go of the past. The mistakes we made in the past, let go of those. But to lose our life is to walk away from that stuff and follow Jesus. Letting go of our old habits, the old things that used to drive us, whether it's sports or money, success, our kids, whatever it may be, love, whatever those things are, to lose those things and replace it with Jesus. Let Jesus become the driving factor of your life. 
let him drive you. I got another uh, mechanical uh, example for you guys. I had to think of a couple for you. This week, uh, my uh, daughter lives in Hartford, and the power went out, so they had our generator. They fired it up. It ran great for a little while and just quit. So I, so instead of me fixing it, <laughs> which you know would never happen, I'm not a mechanic, I took it to a mechanic. I took it to someone who could repair it, or at least he's got a title of mechanic, so I took it to him. You know the first thing he did? He cleaned the carburetor. Cleaned the carburetor and put a new spark plug in it, pulled the rope and it started. That simple. And I started to think, you know what? Isn't that what Jesus wants to do to us? Doesn't he want to clean us up and put a new spark in us? Isn't that exactly what Jesus wants to do with us? He wants to, be, he wants to do that in our hearts, and our lives. But you know what? In order to keep that generator running for the three days that they were without power, they had to put gas in it every day. They had to put gas in it. Just like us. In order for us to keep running, we got to keep putting the Word of God in us. We got to keep going to Him in prayer. We got to keep putting the Word of God in us to draw close to Him, to learn from Him. Dad's what drives you. Are you driven by Jesus? Are you fully committed to Him? Last part of Mark chapter 8, verse 37. What will you give in exchange for your soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my word in this adulterous generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him also when my Father comes into glory with all his angels. We're not ashamed to put out a political banner. We're not ashamed to uh, vote, the vote no stickers in the front yard of our house. We might not even be ashamed to hang a Chicago Cubs banner or a Detroit Tiger banner or maybe a little green and white, or a big M. Dad, so let's not be ashamed when it comes to Jesus. Just think with me for a minute. Dad, let's not be ashamed when it comes to the dinner table, praying and giving thanks for God. Let's not be ashamed when we kneel beside the bed and tuck our kids in bed, or memorizing scriptures, or reading the word of God, or devotions together. Dad, let's not be ashamed. Let's just do it. Dads, let's lead our families in prayer, Bible, devotional time with family, memorizing scriptures. Dads, let's be a disciple of Jesus today. Let's not be ashamed. Let's not be ashamed to pray with your wife either. Let's not be ashamed. Let's not do that. I just want to encourage you and strengthen you and pray for you. Dads, we have a great responsibility and opportunity to lead our families, to put Jesus first, and let that other self, let Jesus take care of that other stuff. Let's put Jesus first. Let's do that. Dads, I want to challenge you this week. Pick one of these things and do better than you did last week. Just pick one of them and do better. Let me give you the list again. Pray with your family. If you did it twice last week, do it three times this week. Uh, read the Bible with your family or do devotions with your family. If you did it twice last week, do it three times this week. Uh, memorize scriptures. If you learned one verse last week, do two verses this week. Dads, just do better. Do better at being a disciple of Jesus as you follow him every day of your life. Dads, let's stand together. I want to pray for the dads today. Father, we thank you that you are an awesome God and that you love us so very much and you created dads. You created families, designed us to live together in families. We thank and praise you for that. And I pray, Father, that you'd help these dads, that they would pray with their families, that they would have devotions together, that you would help them memorize scripture, that you would help them be a disciple of Jesus. Better and better each day. Thank you, Father, for these dads. Give them the courage. Give them the strength. Give them the wisdom. Help them not to be ashamed to proclaim the truth in their family, in our community. We thank and praise you, Father, for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. I have a book for all the dads today before you leave. 
and uh, the worship team is going to come and have a do a couple songs, so they'll put a song in your head so you'll remember it. Give you a song to sing throughout the week, and if you could help us with the chairs uh, on the cards, that would be awesome as well. Thanks for being with us and worshiping with us today. Like I said, depending on the weather, we'll be outside next week or uh, inside, depending on what the weather looks like. Let's stand together.